All right, Francis, thank you. Thank you for that reminder. I really, really do appreciate that. You were a little bit late though, Francis. Well, <laughs> because I'm technically uh, I'm driving. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Francis. All right, so um, I'm, I'm very sorry for those that are listening to the recording on YouTube. Um, we've, we've been talking about the internal uh, benefits, the internal uses of essential oils. Um, people are joining the Zoom as I'm talking. Um, so here we go. So we're talking about the benefits of internal use. Okay. Now, one of the most common reasons for ingesting essential oils is to go ahead and reap those internal benefits we hold for the body. All right, so here comes more people on. I'm very, very glad for all for everybody that's joining. Uh, I, every time, every time somebody joins, I have to go ahead and, and uh, redo some things, but it's okay. It's all right. We'll, we're we're good. We're we're rolling with this. Um, now, essential oils, and each one possesses a different chemical structure that's going to provide the body with unique benefits and certain properties. Right? For example. Some essential oils can be used internally to promote healthy cell functions or support GI health or to maintain healthy immune function, while others may offer internal cleansing benefits. Very, very important. I was talking to my daughter on the way home last night and she was like, mom, I just don't feel good. And so I told her, I said, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to start tomorrow morning. You are going to do a detox. I want every glass of water that you drink to, to have a, a, a drop of lemon put in it. Why? Because lemon is a detox. She needs to detox herself, right? I told her, stop the sugar and start adding lemon to your water to detox. Um, so very, very important that cleansing, the cleansing benefits of essential oils. Now, when used properly, essential oils hold a wide array of wellness benefits that can come from internal use. In addition to substantial health benefits, internal use also provides a way to add safe, natural and very potent. And I want to I want to emphasize potent. A little bit goes a long way. One drop in a glass is all you need. Don't be putting 10, 20 drops in there. No, these are very, very strong oils, doTERRA. So not only will the addition of essential oils to entrees, drinks, snacks, baked goods provide a simple way to experience the health benefits of essential oils, it's all going also going to add that very unique flavor. Okay, we're going to talk about some of those flavors and some of those ways in just a moment. But here's the question. Again, we, this is what we've been talking about, and this is what we're going to continue talking about all throughout this class. Is it safe? Yes, it is. It is safe to use essential oils internally. The one thing that you must do is you must make sure that that essential oil is an internal use essential oil. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So if you have never used essential oils internally, it might seem strange to consume something very powerful and potent, but I want you to, I just want you to rest easy. Okay. Essential oils come from edible things such as plants, fruits, different compounds that are found in nature, whether it be a root, whether it be a leaf, right? These are all things that God has given for our benefit, okay? So most likely we're ingesting these types of things anyway. Every time you eat an orange, right? Every time you eat a salad, okay? There are the properties in there that our body is well able to metabolize, okay? So this is the same thing with the essential oils, okay? We are able to metabolize these things, okay? So hang on here. Got a couple people joining on. Okay. Now, because of the fact that our bodies are actually designed to metabolize and process these different natural compounds, like the things that you see here, right? They are equally equipped to metabolize essential oils. One difference, essential oils are highly concentrated, okay? So you would not need to eat nearly as much essential oils as you would. We're gonna go ahead and, you know, let's say you're eating a, an orange, right? You're certainly not going to, to, to put, 
you know, 10, 20, like I was saying, drops of wild, wild orange in your water, one drop will do you. Okay, so, so you're not going to look at, well, if I can eat this big orange, well, why can't I eat a whole bunch of drops of, because it's highly concentrated, okay? So I just want, I just want everybody to understand that. Now, some essential oils are never appropriate for internal consumption, and we're going to talk about which ones those are. But most of, of doTERRA's oils are going to not only be good for, for human consumption, but also going to be suggested for human consumption. And, and I've got a list of those as well. So here we go. All right, so the science behind internal use. When an essential oil is ingested, it's transported through the GI tract directly into the bloodstream. Now there's a lot of science go, you know, as to how that happens. We're not gonna talk about that. Just know that it does. Once it's in the bloodstream, now it is carried throughout the rest of the body and it does so very quickly, okay? Um, from, the, from the bloodstream, it goes to every single organ, not just every single organ, every single cell, okay? That's pretty incredible how that happens. And it's equally incredible how the essential oils can actually be, be delivered to every single cell. It's only because they are lipid-based that they can do that. If they were water-based, they would not be able to do that. Now, be, because essential oils can be delivered to the organs of the body, they're processed like everything else that we eat through met metabolization, okay, by the liver and then other organs. And then of course, what is not needed, what is not used is of course excreted. But essential oils are so well processed that you're not going to waste a whole lot. Like some of the vitamins that we see a lot of it literally goes right through our system and we're literally wasting. So, um, so now, while many have debated the internal use of essential oil for years, the practice is continually confirmed and validated through research and studies. So don't ever let somebody tell you it is not safe to consume or to ingest essential oils. The key here is which essential oils we're talking about, okay? An essential oil such as Arbor Vitae should never be consumed. It should never be ingested. But these oils that are on your screen literally should be, especially if you're trying to do something like kick the soda habit, right? Try flavoring your water with some of these. And, and I might add, spearmint is absolutely wonderful in water. Absolutely love it. I've been making this uh, spearmint lemonade and my kids love it and it's, it's a hit. So um, you might want to try it out. Anyway, researchers continue to confirm the safety of internal use of essential oils, and there's substantial information to help users stay within the safe parameters, okay? And all that is is just making sure you're not adding too much, right? Too much is going to, too much of anything, even too much water. You can literally drink too much water and make yourself uh, sick um, from too much water. So now here is a list of essential oils that are uh, considered to be safe for internal use, okay? Quite a large list, okay? And like I say, this comes directly from doTERRA's uh, ebook uh, on, on doTERRA's website, okay? So this is very uh, reliable information, okay? Now, these, and oh, I hope everybody took a snapshot of this. I'll give everybody the chance if you want to take a snapshot. Um, but just, I'm going to show you a way that if you have the essential oils in your in your possession, that you can very easily tell if it's if it's safe for internal use. Now, this is a list of DoTerra essential oils that should never be in, internally used or ingested in any amount. I don't care if it's even just one drop. Okay. Now, I want to make a note of the eucalyptus. Okay, because eucalyptus is also in a product that can be internally used. So how is that? And I know I've asked myself that question and I've always been confused as to, can we take eucalyptus internally or not? Well, doTERRA eucalyptus oil comes from eucalyptus radiata, which is not intended for internal use, but other products like the On Guard include eucalyptus globulus, 
which is safe to be taken internally. So that was something that I learned, you know, through putting this together that I'm so, so glad that I, I consulted that ebook. Um, and we all have this, this knowledge right at our fingertips. Just go to doTERRA.com. It doesn't matter if you have an account or not, you can access this information. doTERRA.com, scroll down to the bottom, click on eBooks. You're gonna see all of these, internal use, aromatic use, topical use. You're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff. And so this was taken directly from uh, doTERRA eBooks. So very, very good information here. So if anybody's ever asked you, well, if, 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 you know, eucalyptus says that it's not for internal use, but then I see on guard is, and it has eucalyptus in it. The reason why is because it's eucalyptus globulus, not eucalyptus radiata. Okay. Two different uh, chemical constituents there. Now, uh, a very quick and easy way uh, to tell if your essential oil can be taken internally is just flip it over. Okay. Oils that cannot be taken internally say to dilute topically or use aromatically right on the bottle. Oils that can be taken internally have a supplement fax box on the bottle. Okay. So just remember that. Okay. Whenever you're in question, turn that bottle over. Sometimes even, even after, you know, five years of using uh, essential oils, there are times I, it's like, I just want to, I just want to be certain. Because, you know, um, I can forget, right? We all can forget. All righty. I want to talk about the French for just a moment. The French has a model that substantiates the idea that essential oils can be used internally for health, maintenance, and other wellness benefits as long, and this is important, the correct dosage is being used, okay? I would never tell you to, oh, go ahead and, and you know, put 10 drops of, of copaiba under your tongue. No, I might tell you put one, two, or at the very most three, okay? So remember, correct dosaging is very important. Toxic reactions only occur when someone uses a contaminated essential oil, okay? That's never the case with doTERRA. Essential oils are not approved for internal use or that if you use essential oils in an excessive dose. So toxicity, three ways. If you're using contaminated essential oil, an oil that, that specifically states not for internal use, which most, if not all, essential oils that you would see out in the, out in the grocery stores, the health food stores, the drug stores, they're all going to say not for internal use. I don't care if it's, if it's frankincense or if it's wild orange, right? Like, to me, that's that's kind of like, that's a red flag right there. It's like, I can eat this orange, but I have an essential oil that says you cannot and must not ever eat this. I have a problem with that, right? So just remember that, you know, we must keep within that recommended dosage, which is going to be on the back of that bottle. Never more than three drops unless you are explicitly, you know, that you've researched that, right? Don't, you just don't need more than that, okay? Oftentimes, it's not going to hurt you. You're just going to waste it. OK, but I certainly wouldn't want anybody, you know, hurting themselves by just going crazy with essential oils. Now, I really like this slide here. I had to actually find this uh, this picture here with the chemical uh, uh, makeup of clove oil. But I, I just want to uh, mention something now when it comes to safety, using essential oils internally, there there are there, there are some things to consider. Right. Most importantly. We must remember that not all essential oils are created equal. And this is, this is what I want to show from this slide. Each essential oil has its own chemical makeup, okay, its own set of benefits, and it reacts with the body in its own unique way. Okay, they're, they're beautiful, beautiful oils. Absolutely love the, you know, the way that they interact with our bodies. It's actually in, in synergy with, with our bodies. But in addition, essential oils are not created equally because harvest, production, and testing can vary from distributor to distributor. Not so, once again, with doTERRA, okay? Uh, this means that while some essential oils are pure and thoroughly tested, others include fillers, preservatives, or impurities that lower the quality of the oil and make it unsafe for eternal, internal use. Very, very important, okay? 
And that was the reason why I wanted to show the constituency of clove oil, just to show that this is this is actually what the scientists at doTERRA what they what they talk about, what they look at, and in particular, what um, what you're seeing on the screen is clove bud. Okay, very very important. DoTerra uses clove bud, okay? and you're going to see that on the bottle. It's going to say clove bud. Um, so anyway, now getting started for internal use, it is best to start with the smallest dose possible. That's why I was saying one drop, two drops, no more than three drops, okay? The dose can be increased depending on a lot of factors, okay? Um, the recommended dose, depending on the specific oil or the blend um, for internal use, it ranges from one to five drops. I say one to three drops, but this is from doTERRA's website. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with what they're saying. Um, I always say one to three drops. Um, I guess just trying to be very conservative. Beyond one to five drops, increasing the dose will no longer add benefit um, and taking too much can be potential harmful to the body. So just remember that, okay? It's better to, for the user to take smaller doses and repeat the dose more often, like four to six hours as needed. So the daily dose typically is no more than 20 drops of essential oil in a day's time, okay? Now, I'm talking about three drops here, three drops there every few hours. You do have to take them frequently if you're trying to deal with some, you know, some, uh, an acute issue that, you know, that might, you know, just come upon you. If it's a chronic issue, um, it's it, it might be handled a little bit differently, right? Obvious, for obvious reasons, right? So, uh, let's see, lower daily doses are recommended when using an essential oil internally over an extended period of time. Like I was just saying, if you're if it's a chronic condition, you're going to be taking it for a long time, right? So you're going to decrease the dose, but you're gonna stretch it out for a long period of time. All righty, here we go, strong oils. Okay, what this is, is this is a picture um, I, I enjoy gathering all these little bottles and fitting them in there. And I know the, the uh, cinnamon bark is kind of like an eyesore to me because I, I, I don't think I enlarged it. I should have made it a little bit bigger, but anyway, I'm OCD about stuff like that. But I don't know if anybody else here is OCD and they're kind of noticing that I didn't get every bottle exactly the same. Um, but anyway, we're, we're just gonna roll with it, okay? Strong oils. Okay, these are strong oils. Okay, another word for strong oils is hot oils. Okay, each essential oil has a unique chemical makeup, which causes different reactions within the body as the oil is processed through the body systems. When used internally, some essential oils should not be placed directly on the tongue or directly in the mouth and swallowed due to their individual chemical design and how it affects the body. Some oils are merely too strong to be taken directly or without altering the application method. These oils can be taken internally by adding two or three drops to a veggie cap, putting one to two drops in the recipes, or placing a drop in at least four ounces of liquid. These are those oils, okay? And here's a perfect example. And I know I shared this last week. I have a really good friend. She would always come over and take my oregano and she would just put a drop in her in her glass and then she would just drink it and she'd be like, ooh, my lips are burning, right? That's because oregano is a hot oil or a strong oil. So it's going to make a very strong reaction, okay? Now, that doesn't mean it's it's not good to be taken internally. It should be taken internally, right? But it's 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 a hot oil, okay? So you know, if you if you open up, you know, uh, oregano and you just put it on your skin, you're, you know, you're going to feel it. It's, you know, it's, it's warm. So you would always want to dilute it with uh, fractionated coconut oil if you put it directly on your skin. Oregano is very, very popular to put on the bottoms of your feet with a drop or two of fractionated coconut oil. You rub it in, excuse me, very, very good for, uh, for um, uh, your immune system, okay, doing it at night. Um, I know clove is, is very strong. Cassia is very strong. Wonderful smells. I love putting cassia in my, uh, in my diffuser. So anyway, all right, let's go. All right, now this is another example of something that I learned. Um, and 
because somebody had asked me, they were like, oh, I think I'm allergic to this particular essential oil. No, essential oils cannot cause true allergic reactions. That is quite a statement that I just made right there. If this information did not come directly from doTERRA's website, I probably would have overlooked it on the internet, okay? And here's why. Because I went to the internet to find this particular picture to correspond with this information that I found on doTERRA.com. And I was literally finding information saying, you can have an allergic reaction. But doTERRA.com and doTERRA, they've got lots of signs to back up their claims. So I feel very confident in saying what I just said. Essential oils cannot cause true allergic reactions, okay? Very important to know that, why? Because they do not contain allergens and therefore cannot cause a true allergic reaction. An allergic reaction occurs when, when the body experiences an abnormal immune reaction following exposure to a protein molecule that is typically harmless. Okay, now CPTG or doTERRA's essential oils are made up of completely volatile aromatic compounds found in nature. They don't contain any protein molecules, so they cannot create a true allergic response. Isn't that interesting? Never knew that. I'm glad that I read that ebook. Now, while essential oils cannot cause allergic reactions, they can which is evident by this picture, cause sensitivity reactions, okay? I've seen that happen. One time I gave my daughter, this was when I was brand new using essential oils. She had a headache and I said, oh, I got just the thing for you. And I told her to hold out her hand. I put some peppermint oil on her hand and she rubbed it on her forehead. She immediately turned red. She was like, mom, I'm red and it's burning. And so I ran and got some fractionated coconut oil, but it was too late. The damage was done. She didn't never wanted to use oils again. To this day, the only oil she wants to use is, is breathe in her diffuser. And she uses a lot of Purify, loves Purify, but she does not want to put them on her skin. And I've made her plenty of, you know, mixtures and now I know better, um, but I, I ruined it but she had a sensitivity reaction, right? And so, you know, we just have to be very, very careful. Fractionated coconut oil is your best friend, okay? We can talk more about that, but I'm really not talking about that too much in this particular class. Um, so um, when sensitivity to essential oil occurs, it can create symptoms that are similar to an allerg allergic reaction. So we think we're, we're having an allergy to the oil when in essence, we are just having a sensitivity reaction. Now, how will I know if I'm sensitive to a particular oil? Well, sensitivity to an essential oil can cause responses in the skin, in the digestive system, in the respiratory system, and other areas. Some of the signs of an essential oil sensitivity include pain, swelling, tenderness in the skin, skin irritation, irritation difficulty breathing and stomach upset. So basically you're going to know and all you do is just discontinue use. Flush yourself with water if it's on your skin, FCO, fractionated coconut oil, and you, you will be okay because it is not a true allergic reaction. Now, if you develop a sensitivity to an essential oil, you can easily manage your essential oil application to avoid sensitivity or discomfort. Since sensitivity to an essential oil is not the same as an allergic reaction, you may still be able to use that essential oil with a different form of application. Like I was saying with my daughter, it didn't mean that she never could use peppermint oil again. It just means we have to learn how to use it properly. So a lot of the sensitivity issues is because we're just not using it properly, okay? Essential oil sensitivity can also be caused by the dosage if you're using too much. If you've experienced sensitivity with a particular essential oil in the past, you can try diluting the oil or simply take a smaller dose to see if the sensitivity was caused by a higher dose of the oil. If you ever experience a sensitivity reaction to essential oils in, in your GI system, it's important to stop the use um, if, of course, if you take a lot, like, you know, 10, 20 drops, 
you're you're going to want to contact your poison control because that, that might be toxicity, right? Um, but you can also help to subside that by just drinking plenty of fluids. If the reaction becomes prolonged or severe, it's always wise to seek medical attention. Now, toxicity, okay, that just takes us right in here. Essential oils are completely safe to use internally. As long as it's the correct dosage, I think everybody by now understands what we're talking about by the dosage. Um, exceeding those dosage recommendations for oils can lead to toxicity. Okay, so that all that means is just when a substance reaches a point that becomes harmful or even damaging to the body, okay, any substance, even natural, seemingly harmless things such as water, can become toxic if used in an inappropriate dose, okay? So anything can be toxic. All the essential oils have a potential for toxicity when used in incorrect dosage, like I was saying, water, minerals, vitamins. The toxic dosage of an essential oil is always far above the recommended dosage. An individual would have to far exceed the dosage recommendation for essential oil to put themselves within the dangerous range of toxicity. Okay, so it's not like doTERRA is just like, we're just like on the borderline of safe to toxic. No, well within the safe guidelines. Okay, well within the safe guidelines. Okay, so just remember that if, 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 if the protocol um, for your essential oil is, uh, let's, let's say it's, it says, uh, you know, five drops, well, if you take five drops, or even if you took six drops, it's not going to be toxic. Why? Because doTERRA's guidelines are always going to be way within that safe range, okay? So remember, the internal use of essential oils is not only safe, but it is also recommended, okay? As long as it's an oil that can be taken internally. Now that you know, and I hope that I was very, very clear with the benefits of using eternal, uh, I'm sorry, essential oils internally, they've been proven safe to use, and even how they interact with the body. The next thing you might be wondering is how do I use them? Okay. Should I put them under my tongue? Should I put them in water? Should I put them in a veggie cap? How should I use them? There are so many methods for internal essential oil application, okay? So everybody can find a way that you really, really like, okay? Like I'm not one that likes to put it under my tongue. It's just me. There's a lot of people that, that use that method, okay? I would prefer to put it in a veggie cap or in my water, okay? And obviously in my water, I would prefer the mint and the citrus flavors. Um, you are never going to find me putting oregano in my water, although you can, but you're not going to find me doing it. If I'm going to take oregano, it's going to be in a veggie cap, okay? And by the way, um, veggie caps, like I was saying, uh, can actually be purchased. Um, doTERRA has uh, veggie caps. I'm actually writing myself a note right now because I need to, to buy another bottle of veggie caps. All right, now, the first way, of course, is putting essential oils in your water. Now, like I was saying, I made this wonderful lemonade. I squeezed the lemons, got all of that beautiful, you know, uh, juice out of those lemons. I put it in, I put some natural sweetener. I put in a bunch of water. Then I put in, uh, I, I want to say three or four drops of lemon. Um, I think I might have no, I didn't put any clementine this time. I put, uh, which, which you could, you could put wild orange, clementine, grapefruit, tangerine, um, but I put lemon and then I put spearmint, just a little bit of spearmint. I think I used maybe two drops for the whole pitcher. Stirred it up really good and oh my goodness, was that yummy. Tasted so, so good. So it's a very good way to get you to drink a lot of water um, is putting essential oils in your water. So I want everybody Everybody today, get yourself some essential oils that you can put in your water that calls to you that you want. Make yourself some, some lemon water or some spearmint lemonade and, and find out how much you can enjoy water, okay? 
who enjoy the internal benefits of essential oil, you can always add just a drop or two to a glass of water. Not only will essential oils add that very, very strong flavor to plain water, but it will provide an easy way to get those oils in your body and doing their work in your body. Okay. Now, this is by far my favorite application is going to be the veggie caps. All right. Matter of fact, I just went to uh, my daughter's house. Uh, was it two days ago? She wasn't feeling good. So I made her a flu bomb, brought some oils. Um, and then, uh, you know, we just had a lot of fun playing with the oils, got her diffuser going and everything. Um, but the supplement capsules, okay. To me, this is easy peasy. You can put whatever oil, or, like I say, as long as it can be taken internally. Um, but these oils that you see on here are all for internal usage. Um, it's a simple way. Um, and these are vegetarian capsules. They're free of preservatives, free of animal products, and very easy for our body to digest. So this is the flu bomb. Now, here we go. Look who this is. This, this is a scientist, actually, Dr. Hill. And um, he this, this guy is probably one of the smartest guys that, that I know. Um, and he says, I personally use a drop of frankincense under my tongue. So that's, like I say, not the application that I would use. I would put it in a veggie cap, but he uses it to support his body and system. I often put um, frankincense on the crown of my head. And then he diffuses Purify, um, which is just wonderful to smell and is good for everything. But to direct application, essential oils can also be placed directly in the mouth and swallowed for internal benefits. Keep in mind that essential oils are extremely potent and even one drop on or under the tongue will be powerful. For essential oils that are too powerful to take directly, such as oregano, dilute a drop in at least four ounces of water before swallowing. Remember, essential oils like cassia, cinnamon, clove, remember we talked about these ones, cumin, oregano, and thyme, should always be diluted, okay? Now, that's not to say that you're going to die if you put a drop of oregano on your tongue, but you will definitely say to yourself, I don't think I'm going to do that again. <laughs> you're more than welcome to try it if you would like, but I would never do it. Now, I want to tell you something. I do not like ginger. The ginger cookies are actually good, okay? Um, I would love right now if these cookies were real and I could actually taste one of these cookies, but I can't, but they look good. Now, adding essential oils to your food and to your baked goods is a wonderful way to experience the flavor enhancing benefit of essential oils. So if you are not cooking and baking with essential oils, give it a try this week and let me know how you used it, okay? Now, not to mention, these are wonderfully beneficial to the body, they taste wonderful. And the smallest amount can actually enhance the flavor of everything, okay? Now, I suggest if you're gonna use essential oil in your cooking that you take a toothpick and you add it in by toothpick because one drop is actually probably going to be too much for whatever it is that, that you want it in. I'm just saying, um, I, like I would put oregano and basil in, in my spaghetti sauce. And if you put a whole drop in there, you are going to have some very, very flavorful spaghetti sauce. And it might be a little too flavorful, okay? I've, I've you know, made that mistake before. And I think probably a lot of people have by putting a whole drop. Um, yeah, just, I'm just warning you. <laughs> Now, a few things to start with if you, if, if you have never used essential oils internally and would like to. Always follow the recommended dosage. Always start with one drop. Always verify that those essential oils are free from contaminants and impurities. And always use essential oils that are recommended for internal use, okay? So that kind of sums up um, that presentation. Now, here are, I thought this was so, so cute. And so I just had to add this into my PowerPoint. Um, these, and you can take a screenshot of this. These are um, 
and there's going to be a few other screens that are going to be just like this and just some of the, the most popular ways to go ahead and use these oils. Okay, so the basil and Italian food, um, look at this black pepper, put it in your soups, right? Your meats, your salads. I mean, awesome, right? I think I want to use that black pepper in my, I make a vinegar and an oil where I just put a little bit of olive oil and a lot of red wine vinegar. Um, to keep the calories down. It's a very low calorie and I love vinegar and oil, but a drop of black pepper in that bottle. Oh, I need to try that. I haven't. How about cassia? Very good for hunger cravings, aids in digestion. Look at that. Bergamot. You can make a tea with bergamot to make an earl gray tea. Cardamom. Uh, cilantro. Of course, we know what cilantro would be great for, right? Gu guacamole or salsa. Um, how about cinnamon or coriander, dill? Who's, who has dill? I have dill. Do I use dill? I can't remember the last time I've used dill, right? It's, it's uh, you know, it's not something you use every day. But look at this, an herbal tea before bed to promote sleep. Who would have guessed, right? Frankincense, now I use frankincense all the time. Grapefruit, clove, cumin, fennel. Um, ginger, like we were talking about, lavender. Look at, look at these beautiful oils and all of the wonderful ways that you can use it, like, like spearmint, right? Promotes digestion. Just absolutely wonderful applications. Tangerine, vetiver, wild orange, ylang ylang, right? Who, who here knew that you could that you could take ylang ylang intern internally, right? I don't know that I've ever even looked at the back of my ylang ylang, right? My ylang ylang goes right from that bottle right to that diffuser. Matter of fact, I have it going right now. I have ylang ylang and some wild orange in there right now. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is compliments of Lou. Um, he sent me this email and I thought it was beautiful graphics and very good information. Um, just to let everybody know that this is only going through the end of July, okay? So if you place an enrollment order of $150 or more, you're going to, the, the person who, who enrolls is going to receive 50 doTERRA dollars, okay? I know, I know there's somebody on this call right now that's getting ready to en enroll their daughter um, with the BOGO box. Just know that not only are you getting uh, the commissions from that, not only are you getting all the free products, but you're also getting 50 free doTERRA dollars with that. So that is a really, really good deal. Now, Lou can maybe um, help us because this was a question that I have. I know the BOGO is ending today. So if you have not gone into that BOGO, today is the last day. But it, Lou might know if that BOGO box is Un until the supplies last or if that's also ending today. I just went ahead and, and bought mine because uh, I didn't want to miss out. Um, but anyway, just, just know that these are some really good ways to, you know, to, to uh, take advantage of the 50 free doTERRA, doTERRA dollars. All right, so why doTERRA? Now this is old information. There's way more than 3 million wellness advocates by now. Sourced from over 40 countries, two thirds of which are considered developing countries. So doTERRA actually helps these countries. doTERRA leaves the country better than it found it, okay? It, we don't just rob them of all of their essential oils. doTERRA does some really good things with these countries, okay? Natural medicine and over 100 essential oils. That's why I use doTERRA. All righty, I am going to end this and open up with everybody. And here we go. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so yes, we started, we started the class with just a handful. I think there were six of us on here, maybe seven when I started, and we've, we've more than doubled um, the class. Let me go ahead and... Stop the recording.